All right, we now have our zipper sewn in and I've used a top stitching thread on mine. That's why I went to the other machine. Now what you're going to do, I said three eighths before I think it was, but it's actually a quarter of an inch that you fold your pockets back, wrong sides to wrong side, just on those two edges. Then you're going to line up those two folded edges with each other and clip them. We are going to use this to turn through later on. So clip them together at the fold. Just a quarter inch fold on both pieces. This lines it up. Now, like we did before, we are going to flip back the lining piece and we are going to stitch the sides of our pocket shut. Slowly over the teeth so I don't do what I did last time and snap a needle. down and make sure that you catch that fold folded up so that's what you have done for your pocket and you catch that folded edge up that edge is still open now we do the same on the other side fold our lining piece back so that we don't catch it and if it's easier fold do it from the bottom at the folds Work your way down and finish off at the top of the fold. Again, carefully over the zipper so the needle goes between the teeth. And there's our zipper pocket done. You open that up. You can see you have your pocket and you have your opening at the bottom that I've clipped. That will be for turning through. All right, this next bit, we're going to be preparing our zipper for the top of our Neo crossbody. What we're going to do is on our zipper pull end, we are going to open those teeth up a little bit. Because I was working with black tape, it's a little bit hard to show you the markings on it. So I've actually prepared mine so you can see what it looks like finished but I'm going to show you on an old piece of white tape I'm just going to open those up a little bit you are going to measure three quarters of an inches down from the end of your tape then what you're going to do is you're going to get that piece of tape pinch it at the line and pull it over towards the teeth of your zip so what you end up with is, I'm just going to put a clip on it to hold it in place. So that's what you're going to end up with is it's going to be folded. That fold is going to run along the edge of the teeth and be roughly a 90 degree angle. Now what you're going to do is come back and stitch where I've got this clip, this little edge of the tape, you're going to stitch that edge down like I did on here. Mine's in pink thread, so you can see that I've stitched. Then when you've stitched it, you're going to trim the edge of that tape so that it's level with the edge of your zipper tape. Then you are going to measure, pull your zip up, then you're going to measure nine inches. So from the pull down to the end of the zip 
you want nine inches, make a mark. at that nine inch point and you're going to trim your sip off then what we're going to do is we are going to get our zipper tab wherever that has gone there it is you piece off the zipper tab. You either have a piece of your exterior or your accent. I'm using cork, so mine doesn't have a bigger fold. And you will fold that over the edge of the tape halfway and stitch across. And I'll be doing that on the other machine, so I'll be back when I've got that done. All right, once you've done that and you've top stitched the edge of your zipper tab, what you need to do is mark the center of your zipper. I've used a white dressmaker pencil because I'm using the black tape, but sometimes you, if you've got lighter colored tapes, you just use a pen. I always use friction pens because I can iron them away or it has a little eraser on the end that you can rub it away with some friction. Marking the center of both exterior pieces and both lining pieces with little marks so that you know where to line up. We will start with our exterior front and our liner piece that has the zipper pocket in it and our zipper. We are going to place the external front piece right side up. Zipper with the pull on it, right side down, lining up those center marks. So the center of your zip with the center of your panel. I'm just going to put a clip in it to hold it for the moment. I'm going to clip away from the center so that I can come back and check where that center mark is. Then we're going to place the lining piece sorry before we do that we need to top stitch or edge based in place rather the edge of this zip using a 1 8 inch seam getting as close to the teeth as you can so baste that in place so that it stays where you need it Making sure where your connectors are, that that ring is out of the way and that you're not going to be catching yourself trying to sew through the ring. Making sure your tab stays flat and doesn't double back on itself all right so I have basted that in place now I will take this and I will line up the center I actually marked the center on the right side and I probably should have marked it so I'm just going to need to find where it is put my thumb there so that I can see and I'm going to line this up at that same point so now we have them centers together and you should be matching edge to edge. Now what you do is come back in and we will sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance using our zipper foot. Might help to be able to move your zipper down out of the way for a little bit and then come back and move it back. All right, so I'm going to line them up, do a quarter inch seam. Carefully over the teeth. I think why I'm having problems is, is I'm using a number seven tape because it actually was a decorative teeth 
zip and it's just a little bit harder to sew. Also, if you've got metal teeth zip, as I said before, sew very slowly over them so that you don't snap your needle. When you get down towards where the zipper pull is, lift your presser foot and move your zip back up again. And continue sewing to the end. My waterproof canvas has moved slightly on me. I'll work that out shortly. I might actually uh, re-sew that off camera and come back. All right, now that I've redone that seam, the edges line up nicely. You then press both of them away from your zipper tape. Don't top stitch just yet. We are now going to place our other external back piece onto our tape matching the centers. I'm going to baste that in place. I have also used a clip and clipped my little ring down onto the flap on the front so that it doesn't come up and get caught in the way. Make sure your zipper tape, uh, sorry, your um, connector tab on the other one is out of the way as well. Okay. So very carefully using a basting stitch. Base that in place, keeping it even. Keeping those edges lined up. You'll most likely find that you line up with that stitching line on your zipper tape. That way you know you've kept it fairly even and you've got it lined up. Now, your lining piece with the card slots. Again, lining up the centres. Clip them in place. Making sure your connector tab, the ring is down and out of the way. And what you will do is now stitch that with a quarter inch seam all the way along. I'm going to do that off camera in case I have problems with it like I did before and I'll come back when I'm done. All right, once you've got your zip sewn in, then you're going to turn to both pieces away from the zipper tape on both sides then you are going to start at the front of your zip where the teeth have gone into the seam you're going to top stitch along the zip through the connector to the edge of your zipper pull, uh, sorry your zipper tape pull, um, tab at the end then you're going to stitch across the tab then you are going to stitch back along the other piece of the exterior, back up to the edge of the zipper teeth and stop. Pull your threads through to the wrong side and tie them off and trim them. Then what we are going to do is um, do our final assembly. But All right, now it's time to um, 
put our final assembly together you're going to match your exterior pieces but before you do you need to make sure you have opened your zipper pocket all the way and your central zip at least half the way now matching up your sides pressing your zipper seams if you need to fold it anywhere towards your exterior not into the lining then matching up and clipping along the bottom back up the side lining up your top accent pieces matching their seams and pushing the zipper again back down towards the exterior and like matching up your top seam i've actually folded it back towards each other and flattened it out so it's not so bulky Now matching up your lining sides. And the lining bottom. Now we do not need to leave gaps this time because we have left that bottom of a pocket open and we're going to be turning through there. If you haven't done a turning through the pocket before, it may seem a little bit strange to you, but it's actually quite easy. All right, now that we've got them pinned, we are going to stitch starting with a 5 8 inch seam. Sorry, our exterior. We're going to stitch our exteriors with 3 8 of an inch. And then we'll come back and we'll start stitching the lining. So we'll do the exterior part first. I've got the wrong foot on. All right, starting at that centre seam. Get it under your foot and you're going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance. the side I always reverse at the start and end because otherwise when you're trying to move maneuver things or turn things you will find that um, it quite often it will come unstitched on you I didn't have my knee nift in from when I changed needles. Now we could do a 3 8 inch across the bottom. And then back up the other side.
Okay, making sure seam allowances don't fold up and catch on you. All right, now we can actually continue on and we'll do the lining part, but we're going to angle from three eighths of an inch here at the top and down to five eighths of an inch at the bottom. Also five eighths of an inch across the bottom. Doing the wider seams in the lining allows the lining to fit a lot more snug rather than be loose inside. And then your last side seam starting at the five eighths of an inch. And then angle out to three eighths of an inch back up near the top. And you'll be able to line up with where you started your stitching before. That way you'll know that you've come back out to your three eighths of an inch and finish off. Now all that's left to do are our box corners, but an optional step that you can do on the exterior to help with some strength if you want is to do an extra row of stitching just into the seam allowance from the seams that you've already done. So I might do that just to show you what I'm meaning. So again, next to the seam allowance. Okay, see how I've done that extra row of stitching right next to the one that I've done before. So we now have a double row down the side. I'll do that with the bottom and the other side and then I'll come back to show you the rest. All right, now that I've done that extra row down both sides and along the bottom, we need to do our boxed corners. To do these, we actually get this and try and pull it apart. It can be fiddly because it's only a small box corner. Sometimes slippery fabrics like this are harder than if you've got a woven fabric. All right, so we're pulling it together, pinching it together, matching up those side seams. I'm going to send one one way and one the other to cut down on some bulk. We are then going to stitch across that corner. With a, I think three eighths seam on the outside and a five eighth on the inside. Rather than do an extra row of stitching, I'm actually just start uh, reversing back across and stitching a couple of times. So there's one boxed corner done. And we do the same to the other outer corner. My hands really are not working well today. Again, 
if you need, get something inside and push it out. Again, offset those seams, one one way, one the other. If you're sewing it on an industrial, it's not quite as important to do that because it can handle the bulk. But for a domestic, it is something that you do need to consider. All right, so there are my two exterior box corners done. Once I push it through, that will sit nicely. Now, we do the same to the lining pieces. Again, pinching and pulling and offset those seams. And this time a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And the last corner we do the same. Pull it apart, offset the seams and a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And trim those seam allowances back to a quarter. Now comes the fun. We are going to get our hand inside our pocket. We are going to get our box corners and push them into our hand. Poke it with your other finger to help push that corner in and pull. Pull it through your pocket. Get your other box corner, do the same thing, push it in. And pull that through as well. Does get a little bit bulky, but it can be done. We're actually turning it all in through that pocket opening and through the pocket zipper. That's why those zips needed to be open so that you have access. Cork and waterproof canvas are not easy to manoeuvre. If you're using cotton, it will be a lot easier. If you're using vinyl or leather, it will be similar to what I'm doing and you will struggle a little bit to turn it, but just keep doing it bit by bit and you will get there. You can see it's starting to come through now. Again, get your fingers in through that pocket opening and push out your box corners of your lining. That will help pull the lining into place. Get your outer turned properly.
here we go now it's starting to come through get your corners might need to get your hand back inside that pocket again and actually get these corners and push them out with your finger see how it pops out I'm just going to open that zipper the rest of the way. All right, gives a little bit more room to manoeuvre. Make sure that end's po poked out. Make sure that is pushed down. The back zipper didn't need to be open. That's why I was getting a little bit confused there for a moment. Now that we've poked the corners there out, we will slip our lining down inside. And put, push those corners Make sure your box corners are all pushed out on your outer. And then push the lining box corners into those corners. That will help it sit nicely. And we have turned our bag. Now all that's left to do is pull that pocket lining up. Out of the pocket lining up the folded edges and stitch that closed i can tell you my hands that don't have a lot of strength are aching after that This is why we press the edge before it gives us that fold line on which to be able to fold the ends and clip them together. Go to our machine, keeping it all nicely lined up and stitch that pocket closed. Now we can pop our pocket back down inside the zipper pocket. And that should sit nice and neat because you've just sewn the seam all the way across so it's nice and even. Do up your zipper pocket. Make sure your lining is sitting nicely again. It's the inside of our bag. All that's left now is to close up our top zip. Hook our strap onto our connectors. If you only have a wristlet, you'll have the one connector on the side. I'm trying to get that off my clips. 
All right, so I did a connect uh, wristlet strap as well. So if I had that down on the side, that is where our wristlet strap would go, and that's what it would look like. But for the crossbody, we hook one onto that ring, one onto that ring, straighten it up, and there we have our crossbody with our magnetic clip on that pocket and a zipper pocket on the back. And there is your Neo crossbody. Have fun sewing and don't forget to share them on the page.